Hey guys, this is Dr. McFarland, and today I'm going to show you how to organize your tracks in Reaper. Alright, so as you can see here, I have some tracks in the mixer view. And what's really cool about Reaper is, let me go to this uh, other view here. You can see I have, there's like two fiddle tracks. So what I've done, I've put that in a folder. So therefore, if I mute that one folder, both of these tracks are also muted as well because they live within that folder. Let me show the example for these bottom two tracks here. So I'm going to create a new track, uh, preferably have it above uh, the tracks you want to put in the folder. And then there's multiple ways you can do this. But see, there's like a little folder right here. So it says cycle whether this is a track, a folder, or the last track in a folder. So if I press this once, these two tracks indent just slightly. And now these two tracks are in there. So if this icon is red, that means this track is the last track in the folder. Okay? So it's pretty easy. You can go in and name it and say mix group or something. Okay? And as you go through here, you can see I had three different acoustic guitar tracks that were played in stereo. So what I've done is I've put each one of these tracks in its own folder. And then I put all three folders into an additional folder called Acoustic Guitar Group. Okay, so I'm basically using folders as groups. I have a piano, then a, a bass was just one track, so that's all by itself, as well as the uh, mandolin down here. That was all by itself as well. So um, then I have all these drums in a group. And then I have all my uh, my subgroups up here. So the tracks in purple are drums, instrument, and vocal verb. And I have a Valhalla room on there for that. And then I have a uh, keys, guitars, bass, and bass crush. And those are all being sent to the instrument bus up here. And then the drums... Yeah, the drums are being sent to the band bus, okay? So all my drums down here that were in the folder are also being sent to the drum bus by itself. You can see that here. So what that does, you know, you would ask me, why, Dr. McFarlane, are you putting all these drum tracks in a folder or a group when you can just send them all to this one uh, subgroup up here? Well, it's way easier to send multiple tracks to a, to a group and then sending that group to the subgroup, which is what I've done here. And also, I've, I've uh, bypassed the master send because I'm only sending it to the drum bus and not the drum bus and the master. So that's how you can still utilize a folder and then also send it to... Uh, individual buses up here. I think I was calling them uh, subgroups earlier, but I'd rather call them buses. And that means also when I solo the band bus, that I'm only hearing the band itself and not any vocals that I have in the session. Okay? So if I go back to mixer view here, you can see that in the tracking view, all this is all spread out, and I can see all the waveforms and whatnot. But in mixer view, I actually have all those little folders collapsed. You can see that by the uh, little arrow lines right here. Okay, so if I click this, all those buses are collapsed into one. And then I have my drum bus. See, there's all my drums, which is a lot. Because I got like multiple kicks, multiple snares, and all that fun stuff. But I can easily hide them by clicking the three arrows. And bam, those disappear. Same goes for the piano group. If 
if I want to go in here and let's say I want to adjust the levels, maybe pan, you know, change the panning or something, I can do that and then just close them back down. So I can, so I'm only seeing one piano group and it's only on one fader as well. So for the acoustic guitars, if you remember, I had three different guitar tracks in stereo. So here's the first guitar track, and there's its stereo pair. Here's a, a guitar track two with its stereo pair, and then guitar track three with its stereo pair. And you can see that this was the last track in the folder because it has like a little folder last in track kind of thing. So, so I've created folders within a folder and now I can just collapse all three of those folders and now I can control the volume of all three of those acoustic guitars with one fader. Uh, here's the banjo with its stereo track. Here's the dobro with its stereo track. Here's the fiddle. Uh, mandolin was by itself. And then here's the vocal group that contained a background vocal and a lead vocal as well. So that's how I organize uh, my tracks, especially now that I'm using a smaller screen. I'm just using the 13-inch uh, screen on my MacBook, and I'm not able to use my Acer, uh, you know, big boy uh, computer monitor over here. So um, that's really going to help me uh, consolidate space on the screen. I can easily find different stuff, and if I want to change something in the submix, I can just go in there change things around, close it back. I can go back and view maybe Acoustic Guitar 2 or something, maybe change something about that, you know. And what's great about this as well is once I've, you know, this is two separate microphones, and I kind of pre-mixed them right here to where I thought they sounded good. And then on the overall track, I've also added uh, some Pultec EQ, just to uh, sweeten it up a little bit and maybe cut out some mud. Um, you can see I attenuated some 100 hertz, uh, boosted around 300 hertz, and dipped out around 700 hertz. And, you know, these are not set in stone. I'm probably just playing around with them, seeing what sounds best. So that's how I consolidate tracks within Reaper. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. And uh, until next time, I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking. So why do people call me Dr. McFarland? Because I heal people with sweet rock and roll.